Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not not my dad walk on. Man, hey man, we got a uh, we got a guy today, man. Uh, he, hey, slow but go. This dude is here, man. You know, a lot of people. <laughs> hey man, we glad that we could get him here, man. He a busy man. You know, he all in ATL. This guy here, I've heard about him, man. I couldn't never get to meet him, man. But he here now, <laughs> man. My boy Digi Norman's in the building. What's going on? What's the deal? What's going man, on? Man, uh, just good. Just happy to have you, brother. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy, happy to, to be here. yeah, 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 yeah. You've been, you, you know, you've been heavy on my mind since I, I was supposed to get you a while back, okay. and and I was like, man, where's this guy at? He busy. I said, they said, oh, is he in D.C.? <laughs> is he in Vegas? You know, talking, where is my guy at? And just so happened, you showed up today, man. Thank you, though. Nah, Thank you sure. for coming on for Boss sure. Talk 101. So I appreciate y'all having me, for sure, for sure. Say, so, man, just, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, for the people who don't know you, man, just mm-hmm. give us a little bit about yourself, bro. Um, I came in the game early in the early boogie movement uh, with the raw music as a hype man, producer. Um, kind of lived that era out as a as that, and then um transition to an engineer producer, um artist throughout the boom town movement with Fort Worth and the whole Tarrant County A one seven, um all the way up to. You know, working with Lil Runny Mother F, being signed under Dirty Water Music Group as a producer, um, leaving out my contract with them to now being independent and, you know, working with different artists, producing all types of stuff and just moving around, you know, from city to city, state to state. Yeah, yeah. Um, So um, when when I think about the boogie movement, you used to be one of them jigging, you used to dance. I still do. You still (laughs) dance. That nigga dance. I knew he one of them dancing niggas. Yeah, like, man. I was at the club when I first seen this movement take off, and I was like, man, it's a feminine looking movement. You know, at first, I'm telling yeah. you how I thought. Now, yeah, don't yeah, be yeah, mad yeah, at yeah, me. Yeah, in my mind, I'm like, I'm Talk gangster. So I'm gangster. I'm in there with my, you know what I'm saying, yeah. my gangster on mm-hmm. it. I see the niggas just start gigging and doing their thing, and I'm like, man, what is these niggas doing? But then I got mad because all the women started trying to holler at them and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I'm watching the whole movement going on, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So you guys definitely uh, brought something different to the table. I tried to get them boys in Cali last week when we was up there. Mm-hmm. They stole y'all song, that, that Dougie song. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't get them. But I, I supposed to get them next time we go back, though. Yeah. I, I, you they, mean we need to talk to I them. Got, I got them. I got them. <laughs> and, and I ain't going to say it was really them stealing it because they was co-signed by well, some of the Well, they said they did the a little Dallas, bit better. They, they, they were co-signed by some of the Dallas Boogie Movement artists. So okay. it was kind of like a... Toss to yeah, it. It's like a lob so pass. It, yeah. It, it may seem like it was stolen, but... You know, like I say, they got the cosign from some of the wow. people that was doing it, doing it back then. I never would have, I never would have thought that. Uh, you know, I never would have thought that basically that movement back then would have turned to what we're dealing with now. That's yeah. a long stretch, man. I mean, I could. Uh, you was in it. You supposed to. Reason being is because, like you said, no one accepted the boogie movement. You was you was the street gangster nigga in the yeah, club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking like, at nah, you. Nah, this 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 shit feminine. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. However you looking at, it, you know what I'm saying? So Dallas as a as a city at first didn't accept that. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't want that type of uh, light shined on them. Like, oh, that's the dance in that city. They ain't got no gangsters or whatever. So mm-hmm. it had to become what it is today in order for us to be where we are now to go okay now we in the industry now because now you done seen the dancing you done seen that we can make party club music still making party club music and uh influencing all types of artists that are in the game right now making party club music and we know how to make the street music so now it's time for us to put it together and show it to the industry you know what i'm saying i like it i like it what do you think about it baby um, where did the name Digital Norm come from? Uh, Digital University. Um, it's a production team that me and my cousin Q Smith on the beat um, had started along with DJ Merck when they were working with Young Nation. Um, mm-hmm. And basically, I worked as a production under the production team Digital University. And so when I just tried to come up with my own name or whatever, it just branched out as Digital Norm. Digital okay, Norm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and I mean, you got to stand behind that name. Nah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, you and can't I, I mean, be it, Digital Norm and you, and you don't know. You outside go. of, my bad, not to even cut no, you go off. ahead. I'm, um, outside of, you know, Digital University, it's a, it's a deeper meaning as far as 
going digital, expanding outside this physical body that we have, expanding your mind, um, tapping into a higher source. You know, uh, that's what going digital. That's what I. That's what I stand behind. Um, outside of the music stuff, you know. So, so you, you to go back a little bit, you said you was you was kind of like backup type uh, MC hype with man. hype man with yeah. with the rope split star. So you were kicking it yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. And uh, sure. so what made what give you the audacity to say I'm gonna now do my own thing and and start doing rapping and all that? Did you already have it in you? I did. We mm -hmm. uh, at, at PV, we were already a group, prime time. Here we go. I now see. I done got too many <laughs> niggas from the prime time click on Boss Talk mm -hmm. One Hundred and One. Yeah. Every prime time click nigga done been on here. Yeah, because one it, nigga it come here with it tatted on his back. <laughs> There's been some niggas crawled up in here and was like, nigga, I'm with you. Even had a female with you and you didn't yeah. even realize it. Nah. Yeah, yeah, you, had a, yeah, you didn't even know that. You had a female with you that was on the click, nigga. It's always one. You yeah, understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. You boys got a hell of a hell of a thing going. Y'all, they probably got a plaque down there somewhere at that damn nah, prayer view. Prairie View definitely they understands and, and recognizes the movement that we brought to that school. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was things going on with that school uh, as far as before we came, but what I will say is uh, Primetime Click, DSF, Mr. Rogers, uh, DJ Chose, Bone, like Party Boys, like we all created that movement. Who was the hardest? <laughs> Yeah, nigga. The yeah, hardest nigga, to yeah. ever Who come was out the of? hardest, nigga? See, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I, I was. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was. What? You know, come yeah, on, yeah. Man. You niggas were down there making a lot of noise, nigga. It ended yeah. up in my house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the noise y'all were making were pushing hard. Yeah. So which one was the hardest? Was it was it y'all? Was it Bone? Was it, uh? yeah, you don't want to say that, do you? I yeah. just told you, you I was the you hardest. You weren't doing nothing but hyping. <laughs> man, it still don't matter. You, you were the you, hardest you, hype man. Nah, if you seen and if you knew me on campus and if you knew the, the, the movement, you, you knew was the I, yeah, I was coming. That's And honestly, that's a great transition into what you just said, like what made me step aside and be on my own is because I knew from that point, like, shit, I had it. I've been knowing that I had it, but I ain't gonna lie, with the primetime click when we came in the game, it was a, a lot of ego. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, from every oh, I'm from, gonna get the dirty now. This nigga talent. here gonna tell the truth, mm -hmm. nigga. A lot of talent, a lot, a lot of talent, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of talent, a lot of ego though. But but ego was very uh -huh. strong. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's talk about that. Let's oh, talk yeah. about we, that. We gonna get it because too. that was years ago. Now, mm -hmm. now we 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 can talk about this. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened? You know that's what a nigga asked you. All right. So I'm gonna be the real one to 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 talk about all this. You feel me? What happened at that time? We was young. Like, Darrow was, what, 21, 22? Okay, Darrow was 21, 22. Okay. As a, as a young man, I was expecting, I ain't going to say me by myself, we as a clique was expecting for Darrow and his opportunity to take care of everybody and they, like, have, that'd mm. be our opportunity. Okay. And back then, I didn't understand that. You feel okay. what I'm saying? Now that I've grown and transitioned to what I am now, I understand where I was back then. But back then, I didn't understand that my ego was like, man, I feel like this nigga should put me on. He on. But he had just got on. He only oh, had one song. You feel me? What did he do? Hey, shout no, no, out to Shout out to You know what I'm saying? saying? Nah. That nigga went platinum with Nah, it. this 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 what it is. I'm going to call it out like it is. Yeah. Darrow always This called exclusive. Me. Yeah. This okay. the this real story. Okay, Darrow always would call me for the shows, for whatever was going on. You know what I'm saying? Hey, pull up. We got this going on. What happened was it was one show I remember. I didn't go to the show. Because I was bullshitting, just in the and streets you know, doing it, some it, other. It, was it anything to do with anything you had against anything? You just no, didn't no, go? no, 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 no. I just I it, I was I was with some females and I was because yeah. I was young. I was nineteen. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So, so yeah, and we had yeah, yeah. we had just came. We had just got back home and from school. And how old was Darrow? Twenty one. Okay, yeah, twenty one. I'm just saying. So yeah, we young. <laughs> so yeah, nah, we we some we some young. <laughs> We young in the game doing this. We gotta remember that we young in the game with. But what was the road doing? He was moving. He was doing his shows. And he what was, was you doing? I was bullshitting. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that was it. I'm, nah, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna get to it. Keep so going. I, I bullshitted. I missed the show. Damn. And so from when the, it's just like uh, in any sport, if you miss a game, if you start, if you a starting running back and you miss a game because you bullshitting and they put the uh, backup running back in behind you and he clown. 
Shit, they gonna let the backup running back play from now on. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like what happened. Shit, I got my spot taken by somebody else that was ready to be in that position and ready to move when DeRoe was ready to move. So with that being said, it made me, I got, you know, kind of cut off. You feel what but I'm saying? But when you got cut off, how did you feel about I it? Felt, At the I time, because you I 19. Up. You cocky. I was mad. What did, I, yeah, what I was did mad. You, did you do anything? That, did you say anything that you, you felt like, no, I want to no, recant your no, statement? No, no, and see that, and see that was, that, that was the that was the real G thing about me. I never went, like how I'm talking about it now, yeah. I never went was, public was, yeah. back then and exactly. was like, and that's the man, way fuck him, him. Dero did this, and I don't, like, nah, I ain't never do that back then. Now, amongst my peers and uh, to my people, I might have been like, yeah, man, yeah, that nigga could have did this, man. He know better, <laughs> man, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So If it wasn't for me, he wouldn't even be this far. <laughs> yeah, nigga, nah, go I was, say. I wasn't saying that. <laughs> Why they always gotta pull some shit out? <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna, what I, but what I am gonna say is that uh, we were we was close and we still close. You know what I'm saying? But even with the people on top of egos, it was people involved. It was different little like at that time people didn't understand business. Uh-huh. We didn't understand paperwork. We didn't understand how to get a lawyer to read over certain stuff. Me personally didn't understand how to get a lawyer to read. Did over Did you stuff. sign anything back then? Nah. And, and that was another thing. Yeah. I didn't sign. Like, I had the opportunity when uh, DeRoe got his deal with E1. Um, they were going to make a primetime click album. But we had to sign under the same management. And they gave me the contract. I took the contract home. I just showed it to, like, my mama and my pops or whatever. You know, just whatever. They was like, hell no. Nah. Like, he, they going to own you for forever. It, it was just, you know, but, you know, my, they, they going to look at it. They going to see one thing and be like, hell no. Nah, so, you don't need to do this. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I'm like, all right, bet. So, and the way that it was, again, I didn't have a lawyer to redline anything. I didn't have anyone to negotiate mm-hmm. it for me. So, it was really just like, nah, I ain't going to sign it. And so, once that was another thing. I didn't sign the paperwork. So, on top of me missing the show. You ain't signed the paperwork. I didn't sign the paperwork. You really was out there bad. So, I, I, so I, I, I the road them was trying to make some moves, and you were holding them up. Trying, they made their moves. Yeah, but but you. But it you just were, wasn't it, it, it wasn't a part of my journey. So, when you first came down to Prairie View. you feel when, me? When you came to Prairie View, mm-hmm. you, when y'all linked in, y'all already was friends, you and the road them? Yeah. <laughs> That's a funny story. Let, uh, let's hear about it. The road uh, came. I was a freshman. The road was a sophomore. Or, yeah, sophomore. Um, and he came to my room because I was a freshman doing beats or whatever, and he heard about me. Oh, it's this freshman in the freshman dorms. He make beats. So he came to my room. Like, yeah, man, I heard you make beats or whatever. This before Walk That Walk. This before everything. My beats was trash back then. Like, horrible. Like, <laughs> no mix. They was trash. So Duro came over. He, I played. I'm, I'm really in there. Like, yeah, yeah. You jamming this, huh? He, he just stand. He did. You know how niggas uh, get their phone and they just be doing this right here. Like he, he doing that the whole time. So, make a long story short, I played the beast. He was like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm gonna hit you up, bro. That's, that's, that's dope, man. Keep working. <laughs> Never heard from him. Never heard, and, and that was another time where I was like, man, fuck this nigga, bro. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That, that's, why that I, that's, that's why I got love for bro right now because it's been times where I done felt like, man, hell no. Nah. But then I have to check myself and where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, just, you know, just you got to be real with yourself yeah. before anybody else, you know what I'm saying? So, but that was another time where I was like, man, I ain't fucking with bro. What brought us all together was again my cousin Q Smith. Okay. He, uh, he had this. Song or this beat that he made, uh, do the muscle, dirty, dirty D town niggas do the muscle. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So he he had the idea in his head. And he was like, man, we gotta get a Dallas niggas to uh, do the hook because back then that's when the boogie was blowing up in Dallas. We was at PV though. Uh-huh. And Q Smith was like, man, we gotta get something that we can get played in Cirque. It's like she was gonna give it to Duro. Duro got the Dallas voice or whatever. I right, bet. Remember, I told you I was rapping at that time. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, "Man, I right, well, you can get on the second verse." I'm like, "Man, I'm finna wreck this nigga. Oh, yeah, I'm finna kill, kill this nigga. I'm finna this wreck this nigga. Trouble. Yeah, that's that's just that's just how I was feeling back then. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, and shit, we did the song. You know what I'm saying? Q Smith jumped on it. R. P. D. A. You know what I'm saying? Teddy B. Everybody. We did the song or whatever. B. Watts. Uh, it got on the radio back in Dallas. You feel what I'm saying? And then shit from there, it was just prime time click. Like so, we kind of it, it. It wasn't. It was kind of like a just. Just something that just happened. It wasn't nothing that we just planned or nothing that we was like, yeah, we going to be a click. Like, it was like, shit, from this song, do the muscle, start doing this thing. It was like, shit, this is what's already structured, so that's what we going to do. 
Mm. So do you feel like uh, that song right there was the one that made everything happen? For Primetime Click. Yeah. It, it def- I mean, I ain't going to say, because it was stuff going on prior to Do The Muscle, but I feel like we all can agree that Do The Muscle was the first song that we had that we pushed as a single and, and had a movement behind it. And we started going from, like I say, school to school, doing shows and it, it led to the walk that walk and the ice cream paint job and all the mixtapes we did and all that. Where was you at when the road was on 106 in Park? I was right there. You was with him up there? Yeah. So you, you how I was, was that experience? Crazy. Yeah, uh, who did you meet? Uh, I met, I met, uh, I met. Uh, Back then it was who was Bob Johnson? Nah, who, who was, nah, who, I, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> who was it? Was I, it? Who I, was it? Uh, What's her name? Deborah Lee. Deborah Lee. I yeah. think. I think at that. Who the hell was I, it? I think. Nah, Mona I, Scott. I, I wasn't I even with I, 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 I damn sure didn't meet whoever was running <laughs> BT. <laughs> uh, I think at the time the host was. Nah, it was it? What was the it one wasn't chick? Free, AJ and Free. Nah, it wasn't AJ and Free. It was what was the uh, chick? Roxanne, Roxanne, Roxanne. Roxanne. Yeah, it was it. Roxanne, she, yeah, the one that was dating Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Okay, she was the, what was she going was on with that? Did you holler? Cool. You holler? She was nigga? cool. Yeah. You nineteen twenty? Nigga, I'm twenty. I'm twenty, I'm 20 at this time. Yeah. I'm, mm, mm, what's up? Let what's me get a little hug. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So uh, how was it though? How, how was that? I mean, was it like you thought it would be? Far as the way it looked. This this is what the the thing for me. It was me trying to show Dallas Fort Worth culture to the world. So, um, Duro, you know, he had the voice. I had the image. You feel what I'm saying? So I had the shag. I was wearing. The, you had that Dallas shag. Yeah, I had the shag. You had it up there. Yeah, I had the shag with the, wow. with the part. The shag with that the part. Dallas you feel shag. what I'm saying? You yeah. niggas came off the chain with that. Yeah, what I was on. We was on the beat. Your- on the beat. Matter of fact, 2009 BT Awards. There's some footage out there somewhere. This is the same year that Michael Jackson passed away. I uh, danced on the BET Awards with the shag, had the Michael Jackson glove, did the boogie, st- uh, did a, stood on my tippy toes like Michael Jackson and everything. They can't, okay. it, it's, it's all out there, you feel me? You know. Oh, so you said you did it all. I was the image. I'm still the image. Okay, so you say you was managed by the same people that managed, uh, what, what, you, when you was with Lil Run and them, was it the same, how did, how did that happen? The, uh, Dirty Water Music Group, um, so up in the air, was a record that I produced um, by Lil Runny Mother F. Um, I had a studio in Arlington. Just this is when I'm trying to, you know, do my independent thing, whatever. Uh, had a studio in Arlington. Everybody was coming to. Runny came up there. We did the Up in the Air record. Um, he gave it. He gave it back to Dirty Water. They was feeling it. Um, they offered me, you know, a contract to be a producer. At that time, you know, that was shit, the best thing that I could do because. Mind you, I missed out on my first opportunity with the first contract. Mm-hmm. So I was like, damn, I can't miss another opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't going to lie. It, even though I managed and I survived, shit was rough, you know, from the time, from that point to where I got another opportunity to do something. So I was like, nah, I ain't going to miss this opportunity. Whether it's, whether if it's good or bad, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take that risk. You know what I'm saying? So I took the risk, uh, signed with them, and... It was a good experience, you know. I ain't, I ain't gonna like. It. It's just like any anything else, you know what I'm saying? Any other label, you got your ups, you got your downs, you got your negotiations. We gonna bump heads, but I learned a lot, you know. I learned a lot That's about. That's important. I learned that was the biggest thing. I learned structure. I learned business with the music, um, and that was something that I didn't understand. What I could have learned from if had I took my ego out of it. Mm. Yeah. Again, when I say ego, take my ego out of it and. You know, sign that contract, take that risk. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm not in the forefront. Maybe I'm not the star, but I'm right there. I'm learning. I'm, I'm meeting certain people. I'm getting certain resources and contacts and stuff like that. You know, that some sometimes that stuff is more important than being the person that's in front of the camera. For and, sure. And so true. it's it's a lot of the times that's, that's more true. important. So, you know, I, I, I just, at that point, I took that as that, you know, opportunity to say, okay, I'm going to get in the game and, See who I meet. You know, I met a lot of people. Shout out uh, Troy Marshall. He one of the uh, radio reps that works, you know, all of Texas uh, radio, Texas artists and radio over, you know, all the nations. I mean, all of the whole nation or whatever. But mm-hmm. uh, I, I met a lot of people. It was a good experience. Um, me and How Ronnie far off was it from from dealing with Deronium? It was like night and day because you, you was more seasoned at this time? Uh, yeah. I'm going to just say at this point I'm feeling – 
I, I'm starting to understand where the world was at that point in time. When I got with Dirty Water, that's when I started feeling like, okay, that's why he was moving like this. That's why when I tried to do this, he was like, I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It, it, sometimes when you sign certain paperwork and you're young and you're not paying attention to it, you lose control over certain stuff. Mm. Piece, certain people got certain control, and you, got, you can't just move how you used to move, you know, because it's structure. Mm-hmm. It ain't necessarily, you know, it's not your controlling way. or them trying to, you know, say, nah, you can't do this. It's just them trying to, you know, structure you to be, you know, a better artist or whatever. So um, that's what I, I started to see. Like, okay, dang. And and again, like, had I not gone through all of that, I you wouldn't have not seen that. I would have not seen that. Cool. I, would still you, be, I, would, I would still be feeling that, uh, a, a type of way, way. Mm-hmm. you know. But, but you felt a type of way, but you didn't say nothing. That's nah. the part that I, I respect in what you what you were doing, you For know, sure. like your heart was in it to make sure that it sti- you didn't interrupt anything that was happening. Right. It's, and that's it's, dope. It's, it's all a part of a plan. It's all a part of a bigger plan that's going on. So I, I learned at an early age to take emotions out of a lot of things. You know, we get mad. Again, it's all ego. It's all because of what I feel like. I, you're not going to talk to me like this and you're not going to do me like this. Well, when you take that ego out of things and you just be like, okay, I'm going to just move how I need to move, where I need to be, you know what I'm saying? Humiliate, you know what I'm saying? Uh, humility. Um, you know, be humble. You right. feel what I'm saying? Um, that's what's going to get you into the position that you're supposed to be in when you're supposed to be in that position. But, yeah. you know, it, it, it all comes with time. No, I'm just tripping off <laughs> what your mama said when DeRoe was doing this stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, mama and be having a different outlook on hey, what's she going just, she <laughs> just Look, she just said something the other day. Mama and going to be like, man, what? You went down there. You was a part of that. Now, what What look, happened? Look, my mom just, my bad, I'm going to say this. My mom <laughs> just said something the other day when uh we dropped the clip. For that um the cowboy song yeah got a cowboys yeah. anthem he about yeah. to drop I see I, I heard that a little bit yeah of it. um my mom when she was like yeah I heard the song tell the road don't be on no bullshit <laughs> <laughs> see mama ain't gonna be trying to hear it mama man, we do a little that, that, yeah, that's, that's that's all love man she just want to see her son you know just just you know go up you feel yeah me? yeah, yeah, yeah and I'm and I'm gonna do that regardless that's what mamas don't understand sometimes like regard it ain't it ain't about the role where he got going that's my boy I love him he doing his thing man you you've me? been in this game now so long you've matured in it and you For understand sure. you know the ins and outs and what it takes and what you done wrong and even some of the things that he may have done wrong that now he sees it you know all of y'all elevated mm-hmm. and evolved from a place where um, you know, uh, nobody does it like that. Right. You know, you know, you you haven't seen nobody else come from out of that era or even in this era mm-hmm. and do what you guys done. Now they can never do it because the times have changed so much. Right. So you don't even have to worry about them breaking your dance records, none of that. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you was jigging with it. You had if you had that cut. Nah, I, for I know so. what you were giving I them for boys. So, for <laughs> so and we'll stick right now on a on a good day, on a bad day, I'ma hit it for sure. Really? Yeah. So you just mastered the art of of, of it's of just genius. in me. It's just it's just in me already. So let's talk about uh, Digi Norm today. Uh-huh. Um, you you're producing. Uh huh. You're uh you're you're you're, you're making music. So I tried like, to go. I tried to go in and look for a lot of the music, didn't I? Mm-hmm. I couldn't find couldn't it. Find it. So I was. I couldn't find Pretty it. Sure. Couldn't find new. New. Old stuff. I, I found yeah, the man so, fresh. So the last, you know what I'm yeah, saying? so the last record, the last record that I put out as an artist was back in 2016. Mm-hmm, See what exactly. I'm saying? Yeah. What, what, and, what's up with that? And the reason being, I fell back from an artist because in 2016, if y'all remember, it got real dark. Niggas start painting their nails and coloring their hair. And yeah, now, now you talk about feminine. You talk no. about the boogie being feminine, nigga. That's real feminine yeah, right there. Yeah, you talking about when Lil Uzi Vert started doing yeah, this right I, here. Yeah, all that. Yeah. I, I wasn't feeling it. No shoulders or nothing. I wasn't talking about Lil Uzi Vert. You was it. hitting that shoulder. I couldn't do it. You had to be. You you had to you had to be on that line in order to be considered. You know. But how old is Lil Uzi? Uh, I don't know. How you see what I'm mean? saying? And how old are you? Now you looking at him the way. Nah, I'm looking at what the industry. Not him, but I'm, I'm talking about at just what everybody the, doing. I was the boy looking with at the, the pink industry. Hair, Lil Pump. Lil Pump. I'm looking at what the industry was putting out there in, in front of everybody. Young Thugger. All of that. <laughs> you feel me? All of that. It, it was a point in time. It was one dude that had a video where he just had a wedding dress on with a chopper and he rapping and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a point in time where everybody felt like that's what you had to do in order to be seen or to be heard. You had to do just something crazy. Crazy. You know, and I wasn't with that. I'm too. <laughs> well, so, so what I'm saying. It. So, so as an artist, 
I stepped back as an artist and I became more of a, a well, I became the producer. I've always produced and made beats, but I just stepped into that role. Mm-hmm. That's Even one thing. More. That's one thing about me. I it's just like an athlete on the on a football team. You got to be able to. If I could play quarterback, I could play receiver. I could play running back. I could play corner, safety. You know, it, it don't matter. Put me on the field wherever. I, I I just know the game. Y'all have a high IQ of the game, so I can be anywhere on the field and play any position. But that's what it made me step back and become more of a producer at that time. And then up in the air, start going. I started doing. I I was running with uh little Runny. You know, he was the artist. I I'm always. You know, a part of the team, like, okay, you're going to be the running back? I bet I'll be the fullback. I'll block. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that's just, that's that's my character. So, that's what I was doing as a producer when I was working with Lil Runny. Like, shit, you're going to be Batman and I'll be Robin. Well, not Robin now, because Robin <laughs> tripping. Nah, we ain't going to win. You don't want to be Robin. I, 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 I recant that <laughs> statement, though. <laughs> you niggas wild, man. Yeah, Nobody man, y'all, said and nothing. And don't Nobody cancel said me. <laughs> I'm not in it. <laughs> I know what's going on. I seen what happened with the baby and all that. Look, man. Hey, you know I ain't saying? saying nothing either, but Check I'm just it, saying. Man. Check it, man. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about what's going on? I mean, Boosie stepped up. He said what he said about it. I mean, as far as, um, you know, the way that, the, the yeah, you done put that in the air now. We got to clean this up. So, you know, Boosie said what he said about it. You know, the way they was uh, kind of counseling out uh, the baby. What what did you think about that whole statement he made and what the baby done? What did Boosie say? He can't, he, I think Boosie was like, you know, he just gave a, I, I had posted it. And he just gave a statement like, you know what I'm saying? It's something else about a uh, man trying to be, you know, we can't, you know, it's almost like it's a negative thing to be straight. Yeah. Pretty much was where he was coming from yeah. with it. Yeah. And I'm um, paraphrasing, but you know, um you well, know I'm I'm saying was he he was siding with the baby? Of course. Of course. Um Well whose side you on? Nah, I'm this this I'm, you on, neutral? I'm no 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 no. <laughs> nah. <laughs> See how man, how you put up well, here? Whose side are you on? You know what nah, I mean? Nah, I, I this this the side I'm on. I'm on <laughs> I'm on the straight side, you feel what okay, I'm saying? I'm, okay. I'm straight pride for sure, okay. you feel me? But what I understand is, is the world is going through a transition phase. Okay. Me personally, I might not accept it just like it's certain things that we are doing today that our grandparents wouldn't accept that we doing. And you know what I'm saying? So I might not accept it, but... Man, I hate to say it. It's it's a transition of the world. Like y'all, we, shit, we gonna see a lot more of this shit, bro. So it's just like, I mean, you know, you, you can say what you want to say, but it's gonna it's gonna happen with or without. Well, I you. think there's a lot of things going on, not just not just yeah. that one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I think sure. a lot of times we 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 put our eyesight on just one thing, but there's evil going on in that. all corners uh-huh. of, of this earth. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it ain't just one thing. And I think that's where we mess up a lot of times is the balancing that we do. We want to weigh heavy on one one ordeal and then lessen the heaviness mm-hmm. on another one. They all mm-hmm. pretty much amount to the same thing. So mm-hmm. we just got to be careful how we deal with people mm-hmm. as they evolve into whatever God is going to have them to be. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, pay me for that. I yeah, pulled you I, out, yeah, nigga. I, I, you I, were I, down I, in the I, dirt. Nah. <laughs> Nah, man, I, I, I just see, like I said, I see the world for what it is, man. I don't judge nobody. Y'all do y'all thing, you feel me? It ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm not partaking in nothing. So, you know, that's you. That's your business, you feel me? And I just understand, again, that the world, it's a lot that is changing in the world right now. Not just that. It's... it's Man, we the vaccines, well, all that you, type of stuff. Well, you want to talk yeah. about the vaccine? Just I mean, go on and say it. That, Let's you know? talk about it. I mean, when did, did you take your shot, or do you believe in the shot? Or I mean, or that, now that we what, what's that? Uh, that what you trying to that's do? That's confidential. Uh, Com- I mean, I'm asking you. Oh, you don't want to speak on <laughs> it. Then I sign. Then I sign some paperwork. <laughs> was that a little confidential? Some paperwork? Yeah. No, no. I'm just saying. Th- what you, your views? Nah, on it? This, this my view again. Whether you do it, whether you don't do it, that. It, it, it's just another way to separate the world, I think. I think uh, people are starting to come together uh, outside of race. Uh, we are starting to come together as a whole, and so they're trying to find a new way to separate us again as as people. You know, uh, oh, I'm the vaccinated. And the, they, you know, it's, it's just another way to separate us. We got to fight it. through all I, of that. I like that. And we got to stay together because 
as we see, the more that we come together, the more that, you know, things get done and they see that, you mm -hmm. know, so we can't let that power, you know, break us up. You feel me? Yeah, no, I agree 100 percent, man. We got to try to find some way to unify. Right. That, that, if that. we don't, then we a divided house can't stand. Can't stand. I agree that with all. that 100 percent. Yeah. And, and fear is the biggest tool. That fear is something that's been working with a lot of people that come on this panel that we ask if they go back uh -huh. i always ask people if you could go back to your younger self uh, -huh. uh what would you tell yourself and, and a lot of times that answer would be don't be scared don't be, you know yeah. don't fear yeah because fear held me back because mm -hmm. i didn't sign them papers mm -hmm. I, you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's stuff like that that you have to you know you, you you fear is a big thing fear is the big one of the biggest tools that the enemy uses against us um to block us from our goal and where we where we go Every morning you wake up, you you already set out on what you want to do and where you want to be, and you got that goal. But the only thing that slows you down is the hesitation, the fear of, oh, what can this might happen? Oh, if I if I do take this risk, I might lose some money. It's just always something with some type of fear. But when you take that fear out of it and you just again move with the spirit, you you end up where you need to be because. This is hap This is gonna happen regardless. It's just about how long it's gonna take to happen. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? One hundred percent. So that that's one thing that we have to see that is, is going on. The fear is being used to hold us back from our full potential. And and once everyone can reach their full potential, that's that's the power that's waiting on us. It's it's a collective consciousness. It's a collective mind of people being on the same wavelength, on the same frequency and understanding, you know, we gotta move in a certain direction. And once it's get once it gets to that point, that's when we'll elevate. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But that's what we fighting against right now. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. that elevation they're trying fear to stop. It also goes with um lack of knowledge too, because sometimes if you don't research and you don't know, mm -hmm. that's when you're fearful because you don't know what the outcome is. But if you actually do your research and learn your um the avenues in which you should take then uh -huh. you'll move more confidently you and know that, what i mean that's why they try to keep us confined that's why niggas scared to leave the hood you feel me that that knowledge is outside the hood but they put so much around it to make when i step outside the hood oh shit i don't want to get outside the hood I'm, let me go back let me go back over here and, and that's the fear that they use it whether whatever it is they keep us confined in in, in, in certain mind frames to make us feel like what we can do is is too oh no nah, that's too much you know and we got to get out of that like because like you say going and looking for that knowledge even if you don't know that's the thing you don't know but to go seek the knowledge to to know is how you elevate yourself and people are having fear of looking for that knowledge you know but Again, that's that's what we have to get rid of in order for all of us to elevate. Get rid of the fear and just you know just let the spirit move you. So, who are you working with nowadays? As far as on producing music, you 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 start producing in twenty sixteen. You 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 went full fledged in. What's who who are some of the people? Some of the biggest songs that you've done, and and who are some of the people that you you're working with currently? Currently, uh, I'm working with a lot of Sauce Walkers uh, artists: TSL, Vucci P, Rizzo Rizzo, uh, Peso Peso. Um, I've done, of course, Lil Runny Mother Elf. That's my dog, Duro. Um, uh, I got new artists from Dallas. This guy uh, from Pleasant Grove, actually, his name is a uh, Same OG. Okay. So that's that's like one of my protege artists that I kind of work with. Um, his message um, is why I work with him. It's it's a deep. You know, and uh, it was one of those type of things where he, he was just a kid that came to the studio, booked a regular session with me. And um, when I heard what he was rapping about, it just something spoke to me. You wow. feel what I'm saying? And I was just, it was like, you know, you know, you need to need to mess with him. So I ended up just giving him a whole bunch of throwaway beats. Like, man, these beats I've just been sitting on. So let me see what you do with it. Man, we made a whole album. Yes. Cold. When you like somebody, I seen that Zay Tobin did that with Flex and mm -hmm. Fab. When mm -hmm. you like, when a producer likes somebody, they'll mm -hmm. they'll give them stuff so that they can keep them working because they know they got a talent mm -hmm. and they feel like it's going to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's definitely a, uh, something that that I see that other producers are doing as well. So mm -hmm. that's kudos to you for that. So <clears throat> when you um, who, who would you who, who would you like to work with? Um, I'm I'm really open to work with uh. As far as like in the city, who or would just, you like to work with if you overall. had your choice to work with anybody in the in the world? Mm -hmm. 
I probably want to work with Hitmaker for some reason. I've been I've been on Hitmaker. Hitmaker, yeah. ain't that the boy that changed his name? He the producer. Yeah, yeah, he a Hitmaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get a top ten. Shit, <laughs> I'm trying okay. to get a hit record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I yeah, get it. Yeah, I'll probably work with Hitmaker. Uh, as a as a producer on some collab and DJ Mustard, I like DJ you Mustard. Like Mustard, too. yeah. Um, and then as an artist, I, I I really rock with Twenty One Savage. Okay, yeah, okay, Twenty One Savage. And, and that brings up another question, man. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Any genre. Top three: Michael Jackson. Everybody says Mike. Um, Michael Jackson. Even which the dark mic or the or the light skinned mic? Uh, both, man. I I, I, I came I came in at the I came at the end of the dark mic. Which mic do you like? I came, at the, like, you like? You I came at the end of the dark mic though. Um, so you, you you seen the dark mic? Or you yeah, did? I seen I seen just a little bit of dark mic. The, uh, the curl mic or the afro mic, nigga. It's a bunch of mics, you know. I'm gonna say number two, Mike Drake. You had to say Drake then. Gotta say Drake. That nigga that I've been and working at. He, you, he working on you niggas. Let's go. <laughs> number three. I'm going to say Jay-Z. You said Jay-Z. Okay, why Jay-Z? I'm going to say Jay-Z because he showed us the elevation of hip-hop. Like how to go from the, the street rapper with the gold chains to being the corporate guy you know, CEO, but you still rapping. You know what I'm saying? So now you giving hope to 40 year old niggas that still want to rap. If they got that, if they got that in them. Nah, I'm dead. I'm dead ass serious though. Like, if they got that in them, Jay-Z has shown you that it can be done. You can be professional. You can have a wife. You can have kids. You can have a whole, all, everything that you supposed to do as a grown 40 year old, whatever man, you can do that and still put out an album. So, so that's why Jay Z, Jay Z, and you, you, and, and when last time you looked him up on your YouTube and said I'm gonna listen to some Jay Z tonight? I don't. Yeah, nigga, that's I, I, what I, I, I thought. You niggas is getting on my nerves. I don't, don't listen, listen to. Niggas, it. I always I say all. niggas, I don't even listen to. You don't listen to no damn Jay Z. Yeah, but I you want to come in here and and Jay Z, Michael Jackson, and uh, Michael Jackson and Drake. Drake. Drake, Michael Jackson Drake, and Drake for you, sure. Yeah, yeah, Drake Michael and Jackson. But you ain't listening to Jay Z. I have listened to Jay Z lately. I still play. Yeah, when. Nigga, don't shut up and lie, nigga. Your mama gonna watch this. You, know you ain't watch. You ain't listen to Jay because you, you, he's a good what, business. What he man. just dropped? He he's just dropped some. He just dropped. Matter of fact, what he did on uh, listen, Khaled uh, album. Khaled, you he did listen, the song. Listen, he did. You didn't have to. You had that's to another too beat. long to get that. Uh, talking I, about the other beat. You know you what he what said saying? on the How album. How long did it take the nigga to get that out? <laughs> that nigga ain't been listening to Jay Z, man. Shout out to Jay Z, man, for being a business mogul oh. and being the man that he is, a good father to his kids. That we can see. We can't see what's going on. He got kicked in that elevator. We don't know. I mean, we all got. We all got issues you know that saying? you know that's at the house. We just know that, that that we on the outside looking in, he looks as if he's a good dude, you know. So. And then a lot of people say about what do you think about Illuminati? Do you think he's in Illuminati? Man, the Illuminati, <laughs> come on now. This ain't gonna end. <laughs> man, it's all I ain't none of that shit. Man. It's all it's all a hoax. Say, man. So um I can't ask you about it if you could go back. That's over with, huh? Mm -hmm. So, uh, anything new? Anything that you want to? Uh, where can people get a hold of you? Uh, Y'all can follow me anywhere. Digi Norm, D I G I underscore Norm. That's Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Digital Norm. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm really right now. I'm just I'm traveling. I'm just doing. Trying to get out of Texas and not yeah. to get out of Texas to oh, like you, leave. You done with us? No, 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 no. You like Lil Wayne nah. when he picked up the skateboard? You nah, headed nah. out a different way for a different crowd. <laughs> I get it. You tired of us? Nah. You don't want to wear a haircut no mm. more. I see you done grew your hair out nah. like them Atlanta niggas. Nah. So it's on. <laughs> you gone now. Nah, we can just count nah. you as a loss. Huh? Nah, nah, nah. You know what, what, I, what, I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just show go show the world what, what we got to offer yeah, you yeah. know it's got to be a spokesperson salesperson you know what i'm saying well, who've impressed you for producing uh in the city that that you really look and say man he's doing a great job um not saying you know just, just one of the other producers um d-mac d-mac turn me d-mac you be hanging out with mad max yeah yeah d-mac uh 
It's a lot of producers, man. But my you boy, can't my think. boy, nah, my boy, she love bass, OG Beater. That's okay. He, uh, it's a lot of producers out there in that Fort Worth. My, my boy, Focus, uh, the bass lord, six seven. That's who I was looking for. Six okay. seven, six seven. Then he, he, he showed me, man. I ain't gonna lie. He, he, he influenced my grind when I came back to the game as a producer. When I step, when I came back from being an artist and. Want to step more into a producer? Mm-hmm. Six Seven got a, a good work ethic. Like he, uh, he works with a lot of, a lot of the upcoming artists. He gonna find where they at. You know what I'm saying? Get in the studio with them. So, I, I applaud Six Seven for his work. He got a gold record on a uh, Kevin Gates album. You know wow. what I'm saying? That's so, dope. That's really dope. And he from the Ag. You know, I'm from Arlington too. So that's 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 big for the city. You feel? So what do saying? you see um, with with all the <clears throat> killings and things that went on in the city? Um, uh, you know, with the death of Mo three and everything else that mm-hmm. happened, um, do you see anything? Do you see it getting better? I do. Okay, I do. Um, I see. City can come together again. Yeah, I, I feel like, and it's gonna come back to what we was talking about, the dancing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's gonna come that's back. Cause to that's cause you like dancing, did you know? Nah, nah, you gonna nah, throw that in there like y'all gonna dance your way out of it? It's gonna nah. It's, it's, it's we it, gonna feel good. You, we Jamaica, feel good. My wife is Jamaican, you know, cause they dance over there. You niggas really don't dance like they dance. Now check this out. <laughs> now check this out. Would you would you rather walk in the club right now and see a bunch of niggas just doing this on some street music, or would you rather walk in the club and see? Women, everybody on the dance floor having a good time dancing, doing all that. That, that really ain't no. That's not a good comparison. You said well, the niggas was, doing this, and ain't no niggas, women, nigga. Niggas, ain't no nah, women because, when the niggas doing this. Okay, well, you okay. gotta say the niggas and the women. I ain't, ain't nobody <laughs> dancing though. Ain't nobody dancing with each other. We just all in there, just vibing in our own little zone. We putting our drinks up in now, the dancing air. Dancing is good, man. You dancing is, is a good thing. Nah, for. Well, we want we want to <laughs> dance. I'm, I'm trying to. Hey, what's up? I'm okay. trying to push up on something. You okay. feel what I'm saying? That, yeah. Well, I ain't gonna do. All of my back will be hurt. Nah. <laughs> say, <laughs> hey, we, hey, say it, but but them be the ones that you you will remember and be like, damn, it was loud, bro. We man, it was crazy. Yo, that's yeah, that's what that it's gonna come back to that feel good music. Man, you hey, did you know, man? Thank you for coming on the show, man. We love you, brother. For sure. And uh, like I said, man, I'm gonna be looking out for you, producing and dancing. <laughs> I, I got that out of the interview. Yeah, producing nah, for and sure. dancing. You yeah. gonna dance your way. Out of all of the stuff that's going on, and I want you know, I want to be at the club when you. T- I know nah, you gonna just know, just know my energy gonna move. It's gonna go room. in right for man. sure, for sure. That's is what that, you gonna that know. That same movement is going on with the beats too. Everything, huh? my energy gonna move already, room, man. for sure. Say, man, thank you so much, man. We love you, brother. For sure. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One. And we out.